uh, we've had hundreds of thousands of people now uh, take our online courses. I think uh, the Econ 101 is uh, approaching 100,000. And so that means that you can, you can explain to people why free markets work, why other markets don't work, why other ways of organizing yourselves don't work. So let me give you just an idea of, of if, how many have ever taken one of the Hillsdale College's online courses? Okay. Um, so you know what they are is they are archived right now. I mean, we, we, there, there's a period where they're ongoing. Um, and we have a new course that's ongoing right now. Uh, and, and, but most of our courses are really uh, archived. So if you were to look, uh, take the Econ 101 online course or to use it in your classroom, you just go and it's, it is not live in the same sense that Margaret course, Margaret's courses are live. Um, we don't uh, get feedback immediately to ourselves from students, nor do we uh, get, we try to reach them uh, individually. Uh, the way our course worked um, is the, there's a discussion board. I, I, in fact, here's, I, I gave, um, I did about a week of filming, uh, and, and so each day we did a different lecture, uh, and then uh, John Miller, how, how many of you know John Miller, you know, runs our journalism program? I already told you, you're not supposed to follow him on Twitter, right? You're supposed to follow me on Twitter. Um, but if you get on, what, what we do is that we have a discussion board where students themselves or whoever's taking the class themselves can basically put comments, as you would see on a blog or something, and other students would respond. And then what I did was I took a, a, the sort of the, the, the most popular question out there, and I did a three to five minute response for that. Uh, and then John Miller would interview me, and uh, we have about a 20 minute discussion about things that are related to that topic. Um, but the course is also designed to get your interest to do it. If you, when you look at it, um, every, uh, they're all 35 minute lectures about. Uh, but how do I get you to want to do the 35 minute lecture? You know, that's what, you know, Mises said in, in liberalism, you know, you have to get people's interest. You have to, you know, I have to say things like, you know, nine million people woke up in New York City today, right? And there was exactly the right amount of Starbucks coffee. And there was exactly the right amount of bagels. And there was exactly the right amount of toilet paper. And it happened in Chicago, and it happened in Baltimore. And guess what? It's going to happen tomorrow. How in the world does that work, right? There's nobody in charge. Every morning, we just wake up and say, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So you got to do something like that to get people's attention. So each of the, each of the lessons has a little three-minute uh, teaser to get your interest to say, oh, wow, that, was, you know, that is sort of interesting. Maybe I ought to you know, listen to the other 35 minutes of this thing. So, uh, and, and the college has actually put together uh, all those teasers. If you get on YouTube uh, and do Econ 101 in 22 minutes, what they did is they just took and put on YouTube the, uh, you know, the three minute teasers for each of the, each of the lectures that I did. Um, the, the, but the, again, the course is designed to accomplish the goal of explaining to people who don't really have a good understanding of how free markets work, how it is that all these people woke up and there's the exact amount, right amount of stuff and there's nobody in charge. Because our intuition is, you know, our natural intuition is to say, wow, somebody should be in charge, right? But how can this create, it's what Hayek called the spontaneous order. And, and so how can you explain that to people in, in a very short period of time and just give them a basic understanding? So that's, that's what we're trying to do in, in this particular course. Um, Bastiat, I, I like to uh, tell this to uh, uh, Dr. Arn because he was a politics professor, is that Bastiat in 1850 in the law said, a science of economics must logically precede a science of politics. Um, and, and so what, what he's really saying is that we have to know how markets work and how people interacting with each other work if we are going to decide what the role of government is. 
If people interacting with one another causes all sorts of chaos, then we'd have an idea of, wow, you know, that we need a strong government to do X, Y, and Z, whereas most of what people does uh, increases the, the, the state of knowledge and increases our, li our lifestyle and uh, as, as social cooperation, then we have a much uh, lower uh, ro role of government. So what this course is aimed at is for either uh, high school students or homeschoolers or for uh, supplement to, uh, ec to economics classes at the, at the undergraduate level, but I know that some graduate programs uh, are using it, at least in their MBA programs. Uh, and so it's really designed as a supplement. It's not designed to be a course that you would get credit for uh, towards the, you know, your university degree or college degree. In fact, none of the courses are designed to do that. I mean, it's very different, again, than what Margaret's doing. It's very different because, uh, you know, she's, those, your online courses are doing what? They're helping people advance their, towards their degree. Our purpose of our line, online courses is not to give people credit towards a degree, but rather to give people knowledge and get them interested in whatever that, you know, if you, maybe you watch my Econ 101 online course and you, and, uh, you say, wow, you know, I should go take a course, uh, you know, a full course somewhere in economics, or maybe I should try to send all my kids to Hillsdale College because they're so cool. Um, but, but, but it's so, again, it's, it's very different. So as a consequence, the tuition is extremely low, right? It's the opportunity cost of your time. Uh, you know, it, it, we, all our courses that are that way. They're all, all free online courses. Um, and as a result, uh, we teach it differently. As, as, you know, what I'm there is not to present something to you and I'm watching you respond. Like, right, right you know, we've all spoken in front of large audiences. How do you do this, right? You, you, you're, you're looking at what people are doing. So you go, oh my gosh, they didn't really get that. Maybe I should you know, do some extra on that. Or, oh wow, they really like that. Maybe I should you know, expand what I'm doing. Um, the way this works is you're staring into a camera. I mean, that, that, you know, um, you're just staring into a camera. There's no one else uh, in the room. Well, there's the, you know, the, the people that are running the camera. But there's you know, four or five people in the room. But you're not looking at them. You're looking at the camera. And so it's a very different way of, uh, of teaching, uh, and, and, and I suppose, you know, I've never taught an online course like, like Marit has, uh, so I don't really know how that works, but uh, I, I imagine it's very much the same way, that you, when you're teaching an online course, you don't have this feedback that you've got uh, going on when you uh, have students r right in front of you. Um, for, for our course, it was merely a matter of, uh, it was almost like doing a television show. I mean, Bert is, where did Bert go? He's over there. Yeah, B Bert, Bert's done a few of these as, as well, you know, and it's, it's, like, it's like doing a television show, so it's much different than being in front of, uh, in front of uh, a classroom where it's more like, you know, a rock concert, right? I mean, that's, that's why we do this, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so now, now, in the particular class that, that I have is um, is designed to, as I said, to become a supplement to other classes or to uh, introduce you to the topic. And uh, and and so the first part, of, you know, in my particular class, the first uh, five or six lessons are pretty much micro oriented. Uh, and then the last two uh, lectures that I do, or Dr. Arn does the first and the, and the tenth, and I do the eight in the middle, um, that's designed, the last two are designed to give people an, an understanding of, one of them is Keynesian economics, to give them an understanding of Keynesian economics so, so that they can know why in the world did uh, President Obama say we should have a stimulus package. Or why is the Federal Reserve trying to lower interest rates? So they, it's not obviously long enough that they can uh, critique this, but at least they can say, oh, I understand. They must be using Keynesian economic theory to, to do that. And then the last, the, the ninth one, the last one that I do, we do the Austrian business cycle theory to try to say, wow, there's another story to this. And uh, how many have, have seen the, uh, what's the uh, rap video, uh, Hayek versus Keynes? Yeah, so, 
It's sort of meant to do that, right? It's, it's sort of meant to, meant, meant to provide, here's one way of looking at it, here's, here's the other way of looking at it. Now, um, one of the things is people come up to me all the time and say, oh my gosh, uh, I uh, took your online course, or I, uh, you know, I, 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 in fact, I was walking in Hillsdale, I'm walking along, this guy comes up to me, I don't know who he is, he says, oh, you're Gary Wolfram. I said, really, how'd you know that? He says, well, I took your online course. So, uh, you know, that's one advantage of doing Hillsdales, if you got hundreds of thousands of people uh, that, that uh, can recognize you and you can feel like, you know, you made something with your life. Um, but, um, one of the more interesting things was uh, I, I was, uh, you know, I was listening to Rush Limbaugh, uh, and uh, a student comes on uh, and starts talking about he's taking uh, Hillsdale College's Econ 101 course, uh, and that he was a homeschooler, and uh, how much he was, I'm glad he said, how much he was enjoying the course, um, but, it, but he did. And so now I know, okay, wow, there's outreach out there that we, we couldn't otherwise have. Um, and whether you're teaching an online course for credit or whether you're doing it the way Hillsdale College does it, is that you can really expand the state of knowledge. I mean, why are, what, you, know, why are you guys here? You know, you guys are here to expand the state of knowledge, to, to learn how to uh, talk about the mission of what your college is or what your university is. And, and that, this, this gives you a much broader way of doing it. Um, and you folks, could do, a, you know, a less polished version. I mean, the college probably spent a lot of money bringing in people, and they built a little set uh, for, you know, so that I could stand in front of it, and it looks like I'm in a classroom. Uh, and, you know, they brought in a TV crew and makeup and all that stuff, which was, which was very fun, actually. Um, so like I said, it makes you feel like you're a TV star, but anyway, um, but so, so, but you could do a much, you know, much less polished version of that by just saying, hey, why don't I put together some uh, some basic lessons that can supplement what I'm teaching in class? Because all my students in my Econ 105, it's called Introduction to Political Economy class, I tell them, you know. You didn't understand. You know, you should go look at the at the, uh, the lesson on profit. Uh, maybe you didn't quite get it, but you can play it over and over again, uh, whereas you can't do that in a regular classroom. So, so it can be used as a supplement that way. Um, but you could do your own uh, and just, you know, I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure my freshman and college kid can do that, is to put it up on, on YouTube. You know, uh, I, I know enough to know that all you got to do is have a computer with a little thing on it that's got a camera, right? Uh, and somehow you can magically turn that into uh, your own uh, online course. Um, and I guess that's what, what uh, I think might be useful to you is, uh, you know, you, you, well, maybe you want to do something that, that, you know, you know you have, you know, elasticity. Kids always have trouble with elasticity of demand. Um, and uh, in fact, just as an aside, I'm probably using up all my time. But um, as an aside, uh, you know, I have a, I, I have a uh, true/false question that I say: um, a, 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 if a good is inelastic in demand, it means people will buy the same amount no matter what the price. Okay? And I tell them, okay, that's not right. You know, that says elasticity is zero. But if it's less than one, it's inelastic. And I tell them, you know, I'm going to put this on the midterm. Don't get it, don't, don't put true. If the answer's gonna be false, even if you don't understand it. Guess what? I get about 25% of them that, that put true, okay? So what, I'm, so what I'm thinking is that if, you know, if I just did some sort of online section, um, they could watch it over, you know, again. And so I think that um, it doesn't have to be online in you know, a massive open online course, but it could be online just for you or for your students or for, you know, put, you know, put it up on YouTube. And that's, how did Justin Bieber get here, right? Put it up on YouTube, uh, Usher sees it, and now he's a multimillionaire. So maybe put it up on YouTube and, and see what happens. So again, I'd like to, you know, I just like to encourage you folks to go out and, you know, experiment. And that's what online courses is all about, right? It's about experimenting uh, and, and, and new technology. Well, just, you know, do it on your own.